think that's that's one of the questions that's facing every single person, Republican, Democrat, and, and the fact that Al Gore was willing to come out here and talk about his experience when he never does is evidence that I think a lot of people are feeling that pressure tonight. I look, I, I have to say, I, I, I'm just sort of, um, I'm still, I know we're, in one way you just said we're numb to, to President Trump. I still can't believe an American president is wants to question our, the integrity of our elections, election process. Like, the one thing we've counted on over is our American president sort of stand up for how we do democracy. And in fact, we want to help the world do democracy like we do. And Well, I just want to say, you know, in 2000, the, the Democrats and the Gore campaign did fight the, the results of the election in court, in the judicial process. They had a recount. They went through the courts. They lost in the courts. And that's how the process that works. If, if the president... As I said before, if he has evidence of fraud, if he has a lawsuit, if he has a cause of action, then he should take that evidence and put it before a court. If he's entitled to a recount, there's nothing wrong with requesting a recount. He is well within his rights. I think the issue that people are focusing on tonight is, is making allegations that are unfounded of fraud and sowing doubts about the democracy and, um, and the suggestion that votes shouldn't be counted because there are votes to be counted. And we don't know the results of this election yet. The fact of the matter is in some states it's going in Biden's direction and in some states it's going in President Trump's direction. So let's count those votes. Right. I mean, it's, by the way, it's kind of funny. Um, we, we know in Pennsylvania to try to transition here. Pennsylvania, we know uh, there's a pro, uh, approximately 208,000 votes left to be counted. We learned in, Mer uh, in Arizona, um, my, my, my arm, so many Arizona changes. had 285,000. 285, oh, right, it's staring me. 200 of which were there, but it's staring me in the face. I told you that the president needed 58.5% of those remaining in order to get it. Well, Joe Biden needs 59.5% of the remaining vote in Pennsylvania to catch the president there. So just an interesting little symmetry there. But let me give you a rundown of where we're at here in Pennsylvania. The president uh, has uh, currently leads right now by uh, a little over 41,000 votes. We've gotten this report about 208,000. Um, and we seem to know which counties is which. So look, they, it, it, I gave you the percentage there. Joe Biden needs to win at a 59% clip. He's been winning at a larger clip than that. This is not unusual. So of this 208,000, we know that 72,000 are going to come out of Philadelphia. He's been winning there at an 80% clip. We also know that in Delaware County, there's 13,000. Uh, he had been, he's been in the county at 62% clip. Will it be the same? That's, you know, we don't know for sure, but it's, it's certainly a way to estimate it. In Bucks County, we've got 13,000. Lehigh County has 15,000 remaining ballots, and Chester, excuse me, Chester, uh, where did I go here? I'm going to yell at me, Casey, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Chester has about 2,500 ballots, so that's just um, what we think is left. It's our best reporting on what's left. And again, Joe Biden wins 60% uh, uh, of what's left. He will make up that margin uh, and, 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 and nearly, but I'll tell you this, if this is what we're talking about, um, this, the, you know, the Biden campaign had said, oh, we're going to have some real pad here, maybe 80, 100, maybe even I heard one say, maybe they'll end up winning Pennsylvania by 200,000 votes. If these numbers, they may win, maybe he wins Pennsylvania, it's going to be, I don't know if it's going to be by more than what he won Wisconsin or not, it's going to be off the clock. And it, it's interesting because Pennsylvania would be the deal sealer for, for him. It would be the keystone. It would be the keystone. <laughs> the most promising litigation for the president is in Pennsylvania in a case that's already come up before the Supreme Court is kind of waiting in the wings. So. And they are those ballots. They segregated ballots. And this has to do with any absentee ballots that come in after Election Day, but that were postmarked in that three, in this three-day window that was sort of, the Supreme Court let it stand for now, so it did sort of introduce some uncertainty. The legal term is kicking the can down the road. They said, pause, okay. Is that a black law? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It has to do with these these ballots that if they if they were sent before election day and arrived by Friday they could be counted and there was a dispute over that and if that becomes a live issue it now could it's go a before the, the court. court because she did not have time to read the briefs till then but she's had a, another two weeks yeah so uh, plot to thicken even more let's turn to the man who definitely understands the numbers behind this election better than anyone uh, our director of elections John Lipinski John. It's good to see you. Uh, so what do you make? We've been hearing your, your 
protege Chuck here talking through the numbers. How do you see it? Yeah, I mean, right now I think that uh, Biden's best path to 270 uh, is definitely through Pennsylvania. We've been crunching the numbers, and over the last 24 hours, every batch of vote that comes in just keeps pushing the results closer to Biden. All our models are pointing to Biden. We probably think if the results continue the way they are, that Biden will have, you know, win by 50 or 60,000 votes. We're talking about uh, Arizona, if you can. Uh, we, we, we just saw some new numbers dropped in uh, within the last couple of hours. I think there's more expected tonight. Uh, are you getting a, an idea where those are coming from and what they might be, be telling us? Yeah, the thing that's most important is, you know, obviously a lot of them are coming from Maricopa, but they're looking a lot like Election Day vote. I mean, and what I mean by that is same day vote, because as Chuck had pointed out, you know, almost everybody votes by mail. They're breaking Trump. This this race is going to be razor thin. Uh, you know, there's no way that someone should be calling this race right now. I think years ago, and uh, it has continued to work for you over the years. So I just want our viewers to know that. But uh, let me ask you what you thought of the president's presentation today in the briefing room. You know, we just had a discussion with Hugh Hewitt about it, and I guess the question is whether you think it is. Um, fair grounds for him to say, look, I think there might be vote fraud. I think there might be an issue with the integrity of the election. In your mind, is it legitimate for him to make those allegations right now? No, and not without providing any evidence. Uh, I was disappointed in his statement, but you know, we're now, the, the election is over with. Uh, the, the campaign is over with. All that remains is to count the votes. I was thinking as the president was speaking uh, in the White House of the advice Mark Twain once gave to a group of young voters. He said, do right. Uh, you'll gratify some and astonish the rest. Uh, if, if Donald Trump does face a situation where the votes are all counted and he turns out not to be successful, I would urge him to do the right thing, and yes, it would astonish uh, a, a lot of people, but it would be good for our country. And I'm not being joking about this. We are in some ways divided, and we absolutely face the need to try to come together. Uh, in his statement uh, earlier today, Joe Biden emphasized that imperative. Look, we face uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic. We have got to get on with solving the climate crisis. We've got to lift the economy in a sustainable way that gets the things moving again. And that requires pulling people together. I I'm very happy that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are, are really focused on that task. Mr. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was wondering, how important is imagery in all this? You talked about, you know, uh, Joe Biden's been on a couple of times, two, three times now, I believe, since uh, since this election and giving this aura of leadership <laughs> and, and being in, in charge right now. Do you look at that and think about, you know, how you handle your circumstances and things you wish you had done or things you would advise him to do? Oh, I don't think he needs any uh, advice from me, Lester. I think he's been terrific. Uh, and, and I think back during the last part of this campaign, you take the speech that he gave in Gettysburg, the speech that he gave uh, in Warm Springs, Georgia, and, and, and several others. This is really world-class uh, leadership from Joe Biden. I know I'm a partisan, and you can discount that if you want, but I'm genuinely impressed with his focus, with, with his messaging to the entire country. He says over and over again that he's running as a proud Democrat, but he will be an American president. And I think the way he's been handling this uh, short period since the election on Tuesday is in keeping with, with that vision of what he wants to be as president. Uh, and of course, by contrast, uh, uh, Donald Trump ha ha has come out and without any evidence whatsoever, alleged that because he's losing it must be fraudulent. Uh, I wish he wouldn't do that, uh, but I will say this to, to, to those who share my uh, political views, the time for, you know, uh, criticizing Donald Trump uh, as if the campaign was still underway, that's past now. We need to find a way, and I surely hope the president will find it in uh, his capability to join in this process. I don't know if he will, but I hope that he will find a way uh, to fall in uh, behind those of us who are trying
trying to bring the country together. Mr. Vice President, you don't often talk about what happened in 2000. It's, it's not something you do a lot of interviews about. Your former running mate, Joe Lieberman, wrote an article talking about that moment when the, the United States Supreme Court came back and decided that the, the recount was over. And Joe Lieberman said, at that time, I said to Al Gore, we should go forward. We still have legal recourse. There's more to do here. And you said, no, for the good of the country, we got to end it. we got to end it right now. Can you talk about that moment, what your thinking was, and uh, how difficult a moment that was for you 20 years ago? Well, first of all, uh, I don't remember there being any good legal, legal recourse uh, left. Uh, the, the governor of the state in question, uh, where the ballots were not being uh, counted and recounted, uh, had had uh, an interest in this. Uh, 